Hey, what is going on? What's happening, guys? What is cracking YouTube? It is Rules for Rebels, back with episode 45 of Side Hustle Tuesdays. One of the most commonly asked questions I get on YouTube videos about e-commerce is about finding manufacturers and sourcing products, especially sourcing products overseas and from China. Whether you're looking to make a custom product or whether you have items you want to purchase for resale, there's a great source many of you guys probably know of called Alibaba. Alibaba is a wholesale business-to-business -business site which connects manufacturers and resellers in China with clothing brands, uh, other companies, eBay sellers, Amazon sellers and private labelers, and other businesses in the USA and across the world. Now the story that I have for you today is about two college friends, Chris and Kyle, who while in college used Alibaba to produce and sell their own custom bow ties and to start their own brand of bow ties and pocket squares. To date, they've made $15,000 and plan on continuing to grow this project. Uh, so Chris is a recent graduate and currently works in software sales. He also runs his own custom label or custom bow tie and pocket square business with his friend Kyle Boswell. Now, while the two guys were in college, uh, they started Virginia Southern, which sells affordable bow ties and pocket squares. So maybe you're into suits and bow ties and pocket squares and fashion, and maybe you're not, but there's definitely a lot of people into fashion who like the kind of dapper look. Um, so this is a really, really solid niche. And while I haven't personally spent much time in Virginia, only passed through there a few times, uh, my folks have been living in South Carolina for the past few years. So I spent a lot of time down there and confirmed that the whole you know, dapper, bow tie, seersucker pants look is very in down there as well. So I would imagine it's the same in Virginia and being Southern gentleman type of places, uh, it's fitting that these guys came up with this business, this product and this brand. So the idea came to Chris around his birthday. His mom had called him to ask what he wanted for his birthday. And Chris kind of thought he could maybe step up his wardrobe a bit. So he asked for a crisp new shirt and a bow tie. And while he was shopping for bow ties to send to his mom to buy them, uh, or to send the links to uh, as a birthday present, he was surprised how expensive they were. Many were running 60 to $80, if not even more. So what Chris wound up doing, he found some instructions online on how to make bow ties. He found some printable stencils. So he printed out the stencils, got an old t-shirt to practice on and work with as the material, and uh, you know cut it out just as the instructions told him, cut out the pieces, followed the instructions, and hand-stitched it. But uh, of course, being that he had little to no sewing experience outside of a middle school home economics class, it didn't turn out well to say the least. But that didn't stop Chris. Chris decided to go even bigger. He had failed at sewing his own bow tie on a Thursday afternoon, but by Friday night, he'd already created a website, a Shopify site as a matter of fact. He found a manufacturer to make his bow ties, and the only thing left was to find somebody to help him run his project. So he turned to his buddy Kyle. But how did Chris find a manufacturer, you might be wondering. Well, first he looked domestically here in the USA. However, he quickly found it to be cost of, not cost effective as he wanted to make a high quality bow tie at a low cost. So he knew he had to go overseas. And because of that, Chris turned to a website called Alibaba. Like I said, you guys are probably familiar with it. And that's how he found his manufacturer. So I'll link in the description box below to where you can find Alibaba so you guys can browse it, take a look around, maybe search for a product that you've maybe been curious about in the past. When he hopped on the site, Chris found manufacturers for everything from bow ties to pocket squares to tie clips, bumper stickers, and even t-shirts. And he could search for products and then find corresponding manufacturers for those product, products, which he thought was kind of cool. So on Alibaba, there's all types of search and sort, feature, sort features as well as options that let you, you know, search different businesses, see how long they've been in business, if they have trade in, trade assurance, if they've had third-party inspections, etc. So Chris began searching and found three to four companies he thought looked good and that he'd be willing to work with. And he began communicating with them, asking them questions about lead time, quality control, payment terms, and how customizable they were able to make the bow ties. Now, one thing you'll probably notice early on is that a lot of Alibaba sellers can be very competitive wanting to earn your business. So typically, they are pretty quick at responding and are willing to negotiate on everything from minimum order quantity to price. Despite what they may say, they're, say in their listing about minimum order quantities, oftentimes if you contact them, they are willing to work with you. They are willing to do lower numbers. They are willing to wiggle on the price. Uh, and what Chris did, he used what he learned from one manufacturer or another 
to kind of play off of and negotiate with the next manufacturer. So he would try to get the item cost down. He'd try to get the minimum order quantity down. Uh, he might try to negotiate free shipping into the deal, which itself could equate to hundreds of dollars in savings. So Chris finally narrowed it down to one and requested a sample from his favorite manufacturer to inspect the overall quality. Now the sample took a few weeks to arrive, but during that time, Chris and Kyle improved their website. They got a logo made on Fiverr.com for $25. They built a social media presence. And that's another thing, Fiverr.com is a great site. If you ever need like a WordPress uh, site made, if you maybe need a small tweak done to your Shopify store that you don't know how to do, if you need a banner ad made, a logo made, you can actually find some diamonds in the rough and get really, really good work done on Fiverr for five bucks, 10 bucks, maybe 25 bucks, even for something pretty decent. So eventually one day the sample showed up in a mail and they realized that they found the correct supplier. It looked great. So what the guys did, they scratched together $1,000 between the two of them for their first inventory buy. And while it was a lot of money and a big investment for a couple college students, they were both nervous and excited. A couple weeks after that, the final product arrived and it was a high quality bow tie and pocket square combo. And because they sourced it cheaper overseas and were doing things in a very grassroots fashion, they kept their prices low and were able to keep their price point low and were able to offer a bow tie and pocket square combo for $25 to $30 as opposed to the $60 to $80 or more price that Chris found when he was shopping for bow ties. They took product photos them themselves. They got some of their friends to stand in as models for free. And Chris said one of the coolest and most surprising things about getting the business started was finding clever and unique ways to do things on a, on a shoestring budget. He said it was amazing what you can do with almost no cash at all when you have to. So Chris and Kyle's store wound up taking off, not right away, but slowly. The first couple months they were making $200 per month, that, that grew to $300 per month, and eventually to $500 per month. They then started trying to reach out outside of online and go to college bookstores, seeing if they would carry their items in their stores. However, unfortunately, they found that most of them are run by large companies and weren't willing to bring in other products. But they did find a few smaller bookstores and some off-campus bookstores and shops who took their product and they've turned out to sell pretty well. Uh, being that their brand is Virginia Southern and they go to Virginia Tech, the school in the area has been very good to them for sales. And to date, the guys have made over $15,000 in sales and they've also won a couple first place prizes at some local craft fairs. The guys did, however, run into a small failure on their next stab at importing. They tried to order t-shirts, and I think this might be a mistake on this. You can actually get really, really good t-shirts made here in the USA for very cheaply. We also have print-on-demand options, so ordering in bulk from China may not be the best way to go. I really don't think you're going to save that much, uh, but that's what they did. They went abroad again to China, and again, this time it didn't work out so well. The batch of shirts that showed up had holes in them. The logos were crooked on the shirts. The sizes were off. The stitching was loose. And they basically just wound up giving away over 200 shirts to friends and family and took that loss as a lesson learned. And I should mention that this also comes with the territory of e-commerce and importing. Sometimes, despite no matter how much research you do and despite having gotten samples and done everything that you need to do, the final product arrives and it's just not what you were expecting. The guy's future goals are to get into some more bookstores, improve sales, and continue to grow their online sales channels and see where this hustle can take them. So before I sign off, let's quickly and briefly talk about Alibaba. I encourage you guys to go visit the site, browse for different products, think of a couple things that you're interested in or maybe a recent product that you've purchased, and do a search and just kind of see what comes up. Look at the prices and see how those prices stack up to retail prices that you're used to paying. And if you do this, you may just strike upon an opportunity or a product that you can sell and make some money. Now, Alibaba can be a little bit overwhelming initially. There's all types of stuff. It's a giant site. Sometimes there's language barriers with sellers and you may not understand some of the shipping and freight terms like FOB and other ones. Uh, but the site has a lot of FAQs and guides. And if you take an hour or two to peruse a site, read the FAQs and read the guides. Uh, well, you won't learn everything. You'll probably have a pretty good lay of the land and a pretty good idea how things go. So anything that's sold on eBay, Amazon, private sites, uh, almost all of it can be sold found on Alibaba. Uh, everything from parts to items, to consumer electronics, to health and beauty items, to sports and outdoor goods. Again, anything that you can find on eBay or Amazon, you can typically find the source on Alibaba. So if you know exactly what you're looking for, just start searching for it. Um, if you find something you like, communicate with the seller and maybe even get a sample, see where it goes from there. 
if you're not too sure what you want, just browse around the site. You know, you'll be amazed kind of the rabbit hole you go down of, of looking at different products and finding different products, and you may just stumble upon a good one. Now, for those of you guys who've maybe attempted this in the past or at the very least looked into it, I get that it can seem overwhelming, uh, but what you'll find is that you kind of tend to figure it out as you go along. So start small. If you make a mistake, it won't be too costly of one. And maybe you too can get started with an apparel line or an importing business just like Chris and Kyle. Uh, anyhow, guys, that's today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you guys have any questions about this type of hustle or any comments about today's story, drop it in the comment section below. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and I am out.